Thank you. Um, now I'm going to tell you about something totally different <laughs> from the two other presentations. Uh, but it, uh, what it have in common is that it's about supporting and how to support head teachers and yeah, or educational leaders in a wider uh, understanding. Uh, my presentation is called Supporting Educational Leaders When Implementing a No Homework Policy. Uh, I work as a researcher at uh, Østfold University College. Uh, and I don't, don't know if you're familiar with the No Homework Policy, but um, and in Norway it's uh, um, about 150 schools who have been had higher. Yes. Yeah. In Norway, we have uh, about 150 schools which have a no homework policy, uh, but they practice it in different ways. Uh, so one of my uh, my uh, one of the things that I try to do is to see what uh, kind of principles can we see are common uh, between these practices, and I have identified eight principles and the principles you can see here. Uh, first of all, it's the most obvious, the students will not be assigned schoolwork to do after school hours. Uh, the second is that the school has the primary responsibility for the students to achieve competence goals and cannot leave the responsibility to parents. The third is that parents support their children's learning abilities instead of schoolwork. Um, the fourth is that both students and parents can provide the teachers with information about what kind of teaching strategies the child find useful outside school. Uh, the fifth principle is that the school needs to facilitate repetition and necessary skills training and focuses on good individual and collaborative work habits in and between subjects. Uh, what we have found earlier is that that is something that teachers and schools have taken for granted that students develop working home. Uh, the sixth principles, uh, principle is that uh, the school facilitates good opportunities to prepare for different forms of assessments at schools. So the students are not um, uh, reading for tests or preparing presentations home, they have the opportunity to do that in school. The seventh princi principle is that the school ensure the parents that the parents are informed about what they teach, how they teach at school in general, and about their child's and social and academic uh, development. The eighth principle is that the teachers and the school value the student's role in the family, home environment, leisure activities, and uh, the role in the local community. And there's a lot of reasons why um, they do this, and I have a few of them here. Uh, one of the reasons is that they want to ensure that all students get suffici sufficient professional support in education. It can vary a lot if parents, uh, the differences uh, between parents um, when they do it at home. Um, uh, another reason is that uh, they do this to ensure that social inequality is less reinforced in education. And they also do this to prevent the experience of cognitive overload that can be difficult to to see uh, for the teacher when the student work home or outside the school area. Um, another reason is that they do this to ensure the students' rights to make decisions about their free time. Um, <clears throat> and the last thing I have uh, with me here now is that they do this to ensure that students spend time to restore, to play, be with friends and family and learn on other essential arenas of life. The research question for my research is uh, what kind of support do educational leaders need, if they need any, uh, when implementing a no homework policy? So I want to tell you a little bit about the context. 
So um, what um, I'm working with is uh, one big municipality in Norway uh, called Moss. Um, they only have 50,000 inhabitants, but that's a big city in Norway. Um, the municipality has 16 public schools, uh, both primary and secondary schools. And um, it was made a political decision uh, uh, we is also in agreement with the um, school leaders that all schools had to carry out a no homework policy from August 2022, this August. One of the problems is that this decision was made in March 22, so it was a very short time um, to do this. Uh, and the trade union uh, representing teachers complained about too little involvement in the decision. So it was kind of a high temperature, uh, at least in the springtime. So the methods I've used in this research, uh, and not just used, that I will use uh, in the future, is uh, what we call participating action research. So that means that we do the research together. I work at the university college, but in this project I work together with the head teachers and their assistants uh, and uh, the administration, uh, educational administration in the municipality. And we found out ways to do this in the best possible way. So it is a collaboration between um, different, different parts. Uh, I am an experienced uh, researcher on homework and no homework policies. It's been a topic for my research since 2012. Um, and I've seen many different ways of doing this. And that's very useful in this uh, situation. Um, the reason that I'm there is that um, there's a governmental initiative in Norway called Decentralized Development of Competence. And that in, uh, means actually a partnership between schools, uh, municipalities and uh, the universities. So that's why uh, and how I'm working with them, with them and how it's uh, uh, funded. So um, um, I've done different types of uh, qualitative uh, uh, ways of uh, getting uh, data in this uh, in this research and uh, one is uh, that I had a qual qualitative uh, uh, survey that all the head teachers answered uh, and I also have met all uh, the leaders uh, and I had visited uh, different schools and I will visit more schools in the weeks coming um, yeah, so a lot of conversations with head teachers and their co-leaders, and uh, they, are, they can also call me uh, or send me emails if there is something they wonder. So uh, the first findings that I will present for you uh, is that uh, there are differences, big differences between the 16 schools. Uh, two and uh, three of the schools had already a no homework policy for them. There was no big change at all uh, For six of the school they had um, uh, Very little homework and they also had alternative homework. So for them. There is not a, a, a big change, but it's it, it will uh, They need to change something and for seven of the school um, They have to change their practice radically and uh, some teachers and school leaders uh, struggle to accept the policy and to be loyal to the decision. So that's very dif big differences in the need of support in the 16 schools. Another finding that uh, we have is that uh, we asked, uh, what do you find most, most exciting about this change? Uh, it's kind of, you know, just, uh, get the buy-in <laughs> or the, um, where they think it's exciting, there's possibilities to, you know, to yeah, find out. 
Um, and uh, this is just three examples. Um, one uh, said that uh, the teachers come and ask for colleagues to share ideas and experiences. That's exciting. So this change coming from outside brings people together, you know, to, to discuss and share ideas and experiences. Um, another comment was that uh, it has become a reason for us to discuss individually and share teaching practice in more detail. Um, and uh, the third, uh, uh, third example is that uh, they, <clears throat> they think it's exciting that the way it opens up for deeper learning, where the student's life and experience of motivation are central. So, it's a very nice way to do what uh, you, Catalina, just told about, you know, to how to invite uh, uh, the life people, persons uh, around the school and around the students to come into school. Um, <clears throat> when we asked uh, what kind of support do you need, it was, of course, very different uh, answers and um, um, some things uh, were common. And one of the things um, they said they needed support was to create a good structure and guidance for teaching students to read. Uh, reading skills is the biggest concerns, concern that uh, both uh, head teachers and, uh, and the teachers have. Uh, they all, some of the schools also need uh, support to own the narrative of how the school became a uh, school with no homework policy. And uh, they also need uh, to clear out misunderstandings about what a no homework policy, what it is and what it is not, especially in the schools, um, the six um, uh, schools where, uh, yes, uh, where they uh, need to change a lot. Um, and some of the head teachers also wanted the support to find good questions to develop pedagogical practice. And they also wanted uh, support to find strategies for more, more coherent ideas for teaching. So that the, it, was, it, it was not that everybody should do the same thing, but it was in the same direction and on the same uh, foundation. So the actions um, that we uh, have concluded to take in this uh, project now is that, um, uh, that uh, we will do more school-based coaching, especially for schools that need to take more significant steps. Uh, we will arrange roundtable discussions for school leaders uh, with sharing of experiences because there are some uh, very experienced schools already in this uh, municipality. So if you can have sharing between them and they also need to develop. So it's important for them to see uh, and listen about experiences in uh, schools where they try this for the first time. In some way, ways, uh, they can be more creative than, than uh, those who have done this for uh, four, five years. Um, we also have found that um, we need a digital educational resource that school leaders can use. M this can maybe also um, be uh, available for the teachers. But primarily we're talking about supporting the head teachers so that the digital uh, resources uh, with lectures and uh, questions and examples of uh, how they've done, how they do things in different schools will be available. And um, <clears throat> uh, they will also have experience counseling where the researcher brings ideas between schools. So that's practically my job. And it's a little bit uh, like you said, when I sit and observe how they do things in one school, and I have 15 other schools to visit. I think it's very important for me to, to take, to take um, uh, good examples of good practice uh, between the schools, just for inspiration, not for everybody to do the same. Uh, another uh, very important thing uh, I will uh, say uh, 
to to the last as the last thing and uh, as I have experienced or already is the importance of uh, finding um, finding out uh, what the schools already do that are perfect or just a perfect fit for this um, uh, this uh, policy so uh, um, I use a method called appreciative inquiry where we look into what works, why it works, and what can be done to get more of what already works. And that has been a very yeah, nice experience for many of the head teachers uh, when they realize that we already do a lot of the things that we, we need to do. So, so uh, a nice way to support is to, to make them aware of good practice that are already uh, in the school. So um, that's the, um, my presentation. <laughs> that's the conclusions about how we can support the head teachers uh, in implementing an you know, homework policy. And this is uh, an ongoing project. So uh, if you have any ideas that we uh, can bring in, uh, I will be grateful to hear them. And um, we will work together with the uh, with the um, um, with the um, uh, teachers and head teachers and assistant leaders uh, to uh, to develop this. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, my question is, do you have maybe some illustrations to share with us about how uh, this no homework policy changed the work of teachers on a daily basis, on the basis of their everyday work in schools? Yes, one of the way, ways it changes the way they work is that it, uh, um, they teach um, as let the students have more participation. Uh, earlier, the teaching were mere repetition. Uh, there's a knowledge, and this knowledge is uh, your, you have to learn this within one year or two years. But uh, the way they teach uh, in this uh, policy is that uh, uh, it's much more involvement uh, of the students. students. Uh, so the students get uh, more as they participate more in decisions about what to learn about, how to learn about it, and uh, how to evaluate it. Um, so uh, Rachel, we're talking a lot about uh, autonomy for the teachers earlier today, but this way of teaching is also talking about a lot of autonomy for the students. And um, uh, some of the um, uh, one of the things um, uh, teachers have told me in, in other research projects is that uh, they feel that they can be more creative uh, when teaching. Uh, they can be more spontaneous uh, in, when teaching. Um, and uh, that it, it becomes more interesting, uh, the actual teaching part. Um, and they also tell that um, They've, um, they can spend their time differently uh, when planning uh, their um, teaching. Uh, they plan for more activity and participation, uh, not for uh, what kind of homework and how can I uh, get feedback on homework. So then the feedback, uh, the way they give feedback and assessment also changes because it's more instant in the teaching. Uh, because when we ha when they had homework, they the students uh, went home, did the work, uh, and uh, gave the uh, um, um, gave uh, uh, took a test, or uh, then and then the, the uh, assessment were pretty late after the student had done. So uh, when the teaching is changing, uh, that um, the teacher get nearer, closer to the the student and can also observe in a better way uh, whether and how the student learn and how they need support. And it doesn't change the length of the time spent in school. 
or that, it does? Uh, that's a very interesting question and it has different answers. Uh, some schools uh, um, lengthen the school day with one hour. Uh, some schools lengthen, uh, give uh, one or two extra hours during the week. And a lot of schools can manage this uh, without any extra time, just by pri uh, doing different priorities with the time that they have already have. Yeah, thank you. And we have two further questions. First here, and then they're in the middle row. Uh, can one say, excuse me, can one say that uh, this is a way of changing the school culture even in other ways? Yes, absolutely. It's a total shift in some, uh, some, um, in some cultures, and it's also why it makes it very difficult to do this change in cultures that are, that are not uh, the, there yet. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Thank you. I would, I would like to extend my thanks and would like to ask you if the implementation of the project was very demanding, where the new people in schools had to be recruited, where the new space, whether there was a need for additional classrooms, whether there were, whether it had major impact into uh, into the length of the students spend at school, which already has been asked, and have you based the project on uh, the fact that uh, you are considering the satisfying the needs of pupils? Yes, there was a lot of uh, questions, and um, it was difficult for me to hear all the questions, uh, but. Um, um, many of the questions were about how to organize this and um, whether it was possible in the schools then was it needed more classrooms how with new um, uh, what about uh, new uh, members in the project um, and um, one of the things uh, changes that needs to be done in schools uh, is that it needs to be possible for the students to work individually uh, to do deep work individually at school. And that means that some of the schools had to uh, change. Maybe the library, a part of the library, or they change the classroom so the students can both work individually and in groups. Um, but that's a problem or a challenge almost all over in, uh, in uh, our society. There's a lot of distractions everywhere, so the, uh, it is important to to uh, facilitate the possibility to work deep for students. Um, uh, this, uh, in this uh, municipality, um, they had uh, uh, hired, uh, I think it was about 50 new teachers who didn't know about this policy before they came, uh, started working. Uh, in this municipality, and they have had all these teachers um, in a, a kind of um, introduction program where they learned about uh, uh, and um, reflected about how this uh, policy could uh, uh, be, be a part of their practice. And in this in, in introduction program, they were uh, told about the research behind and how it uh, how it can um, uh, be seen as a way to to be creative in the role. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood all the questions, but uh, so can you please? Uh, did you get all the answers you needed? Damnier. <laughs> A, ale ještě by mě zajímalo, jestli uh, vlastně byly nějak seznamováni aktéři, ty, kteří kromě pedagogů, jestli se komunikovalo s rodiči, jestli se komunikovalo s žáky uh, o tom, že bude, uh, jestli s tím souhlasili, jakým způsobem se to komunikovalo v rámci těch škol. Mm. Uh. 
Yes, uh, she asked how uh, the information have been given to um, parents and to students and whether they have been involved before the decision has been made. And uh, that is a very good question and uh, it's uh, not a, a very easy answer to this. Uh, but I, I, it's a very interesting story, so I will tell, <laughs> I will tell it. So what happened uh, five years ago was that uh, students at the secondary school, uh, they had a topic called de democracy and uh, um, uh, citizenship. Yes, and as a part of that, they um, wanted the uh, government, uh, the local government uh, to take to consider whether the schools uh, should have a no homework policy. So it, firstly it was an initiative from the students at this upper secondary school and at that time they said that if we have um, uh, most of the students, most of the parents and most of the teachers at every school at the school, then they could do the, do the practice. So all of the schools had the discussions then, both parents and teachers and, uh, and students, and there were only one school who had uh, most in all three groups. And that's the, one, that's the school who had the longest experience of being, uh, not having the no homework policy. And then the year went by and the pandemic came and everything was there. And then uh, in January, uh, the go local government said that we want every school to be, have a no homework policy within 2025. Um, and we want you to work to get there uh, in between. Um, under certain uh, circumstances and conditions. Uh, but uh, when the head teachers had a discussion about how they could do this in a good way, they, f they decided to get, go for being no homework policy as soon as possible, just to, to get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they felt that that was easier than to do something halfway and something that could be very, uh, very different in the colleague. Um, and then a lot, some of the, the, head, the teachers felt that they didn't be, uh, were a part of that uh, decision. The students were of course happy uh, and uh, the parents are divided in uh, two. Uh, some of the parents uh, think this is perfect and another group of the parents, especially higher educated parents, uh, find this uh, not to be a good uh, decision. So, um, but after a lot of meetings uh, with the administration uh, in the municipality, where they have argued the, and presented the research behind this, and how it is um, how it is um, linked to the curriculum, the new, we have a new curriculum in Norway from 2020, and it's, uh, it fits very well with that curriculum. And then they have uh, have kind of satisfied uh, with the, with the answers they have have got, but um, this is uh, this means that the schools have to give good information to the to the parents. So I think it's how it goes in the future depends on how well the teachers and the schools continue to do well in informing the parents.